Now, Richard Spencer was subjected to a campaign of abuse by his wife, Cherie, for 20 years. She was jailed last year in what the judge described as the worst case of controlling and coercive behaviour they had ever seen. We're going to speak to Richard in a moment, but the crimes only came to light after one of his friends saw nanny cam videos of the abuse and sent it to the police. That footage is now being shown for the first time in a Channel 5 documentary. Just have a look. He also likes to shirt, does Richard. He likes being smart. Um, but as he was telling us, he would, he would know when he was going to be subjected to abuse. So he would change his clothes to a popper shirt. If I think she's going to be a violent, then it's quite often I'll change it in my shirt and pop because then I know if she's violent towards me, then it's unlikely to be rid of it. probably just pull the pop and stuff. I'm sorry, Richard, that's just completely flawed, mate. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know this is incredibly difficult to watch. Richard joins us now alongside Mark Brooks from the charity Mankind Initiative, who support men who have experienced domestic abuse. Morning to both of you. Morning. Richard, um, thank you so much for talking to us about this, because it is not a subject that is talked about particularly often. If you could just start from the beginning, we've seen those images, they're such distressing footage. Um, when did things, when did you realise mm -hmm. things were going so badly wrong? What happened? Um, it's a difficult question because it happened over such a period, a long, long period of time. So, you know, things were it was really incremental. So, at the beginning, it would just be like maybe pushing and shoving or slapping. And um, those kind of things were quite normalised almost on TV. If you were to watch a soap opera, it'd be quite often if a, a, lad, a man's had an affair or something, you'd see like the wife hitting him or, uh, sorry, the wife like slapping him or pushing or something. And it was never, you know, it, there was no mention of domestic abuse or anything wrong with that. It was almost perceived to be n normal for ladies to be, you know, to hit men. So <clears throat> I think it, because it was, it was sporadic and in the, in the beginning and, and minimal, um, you know, didn't, didn't raise any warning signs at that time. And eventually, obviously over time, you know, th things got worse. Um, and it was like in a, there's a, in a, in a domestic abuse cycle where there's like a tension phase and things are building up and you know, something's going to happen and there'll be an incident and then there'll be like a reconciliation where the person will apologise and she would, you know, she would write notes and tell me how much she loved me and say it would never happen again and give reasons why those things would happen. And how long, you talk about that tension phase, how long would that go on for? And when you were in that phase, would you then always know that something was looming? Yeah, I mean, in the beginning, the tension phase it was very short. I we didn't, you know, some of the, the, it, there would be hardly any tension then, just be an incident. But <clears throat> in the, towards the end of the 20 years, you know, the tension phase could last for days. Um, I'd know that something was, was going to happen. And, um, and then, you know, there was no reconciliation and towards the end, there'd be no apology. And it would go straight to kind of a, a period of calm. And, but that calm period, you know, it could last for, you know, months and months and nothing would happen. And I'd think, oh, everything's going to be OK again. And she's changed, and but yeah, never she never she never did change. How bad did it it get? Um, yeah, it got. I mean, just before she was arrested, you know, she would, she would just get up in the morning, and start drinking wine, and then she'd um, you know she'd be asleep on the sofa for a few hours, and then get up and you know drink some more wine, and then you know then there'd be incidents of abuse. Um, you know, towards the end, you know, I was pretty much given up. So I felt completely trapped at the end because I knew she wasn't going to change. But then, um, you know, there were... Because she'd had done things like she'd um, threatened that um, she would tell the police that I was the, I was the abuser. And sometimes when I'd restrained her um, to stop her from hurting me, she'd have, like, marks on her wrist and she'd claim that she'd sent pictures to her friends or to... Um, and neighbours that, that and tell them that I would you know that I was the abuser. Then during instance she'd like, open a window and she sat out of the window, stop it, Richards, you heard to me. And then <clears throat> in my mind I didn't know if people did think that it was me that was was the abuser. And financially, you know, I, I didn't have any. Um, I got into a lot of living beyond our means. Um, she knew that, and I was getting deep, deep, 
deeper into debt. The only thing I, was, I could never leave, really, because I didn't want to... These are some of your injuries. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, that, that we're seeing in the, in the pictures. Yeah, <clears throat> that was a particular bad period, just just around lockdown, and um, yeah, that was those injuries with, with a, a wine bottle. Your wife has, has been jailed, she's been convicted, and we talked about the fact that it was some of the, the video footage from the, the nanny cam the, 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 in the house that, that was part of the evidence that's in this documentary. When you see that footage now, you see it on screen, I mean, is it like you're looking at another world, another life, another person? It is really. I don't really recognise the person. I know it's me. All my memories from that period are detached. It's like a, I'm an observer. It's like I'm watching a film or something. I know that it's me that's in the film. I know I'm, you know, the, the victim. But and you know, some of the decisions are made now. Because I can talk about all the reasons why I stayed in the relationship for a long period of time. Talk about you know the, the phases of narcissism, the phases of abuse, and give reasons. And if we spoke for about half an hour, I think you'd have a maybe a 50% better understanding of why someone would stay. But I can't answer some of those questions myself. But, you know, I, I, I look back and I don't know why I made some of the decisions I made. And I just accept that, you know, it wasn't... I'm obviously big, physically bigger and stronger than her. There's nothing physically stopping me from leaving. And, in, you know, from a logical and sort of intelligence perspective, I recognise that things weren't right. So I can only... It's like a... I kind of come down to an, an emotional reason why I didn't, let, didn't leave, thinking that I could, I could try and fix her, and at some point, you know, she would get better and she would stop, but obviously she, she never did. Mark, we know, don't we, from experience, that most domestic violence is male on female. How unusual is this situation, and then how much more difficult does it mm. make it to talk about it? Mm. Well, one in seven men will be a victim of domestic abuse in their lifetime. And the government figures show that actually one in three of all victims are actually men. But one of the challenges is that often society doesn't recognise men are and can be victims. And also there's not always enough publicity about it, which is why it's so great that what Richard has done is really shine a light on the subject, but also importantly encourage men to reach out to trusted friends and family, to charities and organisations that will help them, and also contact the police as well. And the key thing is, is that there's men going through what Richard's gone through every single day, but there's also lots and lots of men escaping from these relationships every single day. So Richard did, and so can any man or woman, of course. What sort of support is out there? How readily available is it? Um, there's national helplines for men, but also every local council has a domestic abuse service, and that service is available for men. And also the police do take men seriously if they do come forward. Um, the other point is we really do ask trusted friends and family and neighbours to look out for men who they think could be in an abusive relationship, and please do reach out to them. Uh, Richard, I, I'm, I'm curious to know if someone is watching this now who is frightened in an abusive relationship, in a situation that they feel they maybe can't break free from, what, what, what would you say to them and what is the thing that shifted everything for you? Um, <clears throat> I think probably just to tell someone, whether it, no matter who it is, just to talk to someone about it. Because the moment I opened up and told one of my neighbours, mm -hmm. that started a chain of events which led to... Um, an, another friend contacting the, the authorities. So I think, yeah, to, just to open up and to tell someone, anyone, whoever it might be. And I know you'll probably have a lot of guilt around losing contact with um, friends and family and things, but um, they will support you. So, yeah, just to open up to someone. Obviously, that, that nanny cam, was that, that, you didn't install that for your own protection, I'm assuming. That, that was there anyway, wasn't it? That was it? there anyway, yeah. yeah. Um, and the reason I started the recording was because when we had our first um, daughter, uh, one evening, um, Sheree said that, uh, during an argument, she was quite angry about something, and she said that um, she could smash her face in the mirror and then cut herself, and then she said that I'll tell the police that you did it. And then she said, once I've done that, I'll get a restraining order against you so you won't be able to see the children and your family won't be able to see the children. So when she did that, I thought, well, I'm not... And I knew that I was the, I was the victim, not the abuser, so I thought, well, I'll get my own evidence to act as an insurance policy if she was to ever do that. Never intended, I never thought I'd have to use the evidence I had. But, you know, obviously, it doesn't bear thinking about what might have happened if I didn't have the, have the evidence.
you think if you hadn't had that footage, maybe it would have been more difficult to... I think so, because she's um, a really good uh, liar. Um, you know, she's told lots of lies and people believed her. a lot of the things that she said. Like going through the family court was like one of the most horrific experiences that I've, that I've had during, in the family court. She made 42 false allegations about th trying to make out that I was the, the abuser. So something called DAVO, which is the deny attack reverse victim offender in, in the family court. She made out that it was me that was the abuser and um, I had to take time off work and I, uh, with, you know, with stress because um, all these false allegations that I had to... I felt like I was, on, I was the one on trial in the family court and I had to prove that the things that she was saying about me weren't true. And, and how is life today? Well, life's really great now. So the main thing is the children. The children are, are really happy, happier than they've ever been. Really confident. It was the school um, opened uh, uh, last week with the um, parents' evening and the feedback is... I guess a lot of parents, when they go to parents' evening, are concerned about academic things, how they're doing in maths and English, but I'm more concerned about, you know, the emotional side of things, and they're all really happy and really confident, so that's the main thing. And I've met, um, you know, a new partner, and she's completely the opposite of um, Shireen everywhere, so um, things are really good for the family. OK, it's good to see you smile. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much both for, for coming in this morning. I know you said that it was hard to get even a snapshot of, of the issue and the reality in, in a short mm -hmm. conversation, but I think you've really helped us understand mm -hmm. this morning. So thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, and that documentary, it's called My Wife, My Abuser, The Secret Footage. It's on Channel 5 tonight at 10 o'clock. And if you have been affected by any of the issues raised in the conversation we've just had, help is available on the BBC Action Line website, just visit bbc.co.uk slash Action Line. Richard and Mark saying that uh, the support is out there. Right.